All right, boys and girls, uh, so we have already discussed a little bit of Australia's economic system, but I want to go through, uh, for especially for my virtual students, I want to go through the entire PowerPoint with you because you might need that extra support. Uh, we talked about the football field and we talked about how different economic systems, uh, you can find yourself all the way over on the, what is that, the Broncos side? No, the command side, or you can find yourself all the way on the other side, which would be the market side. Okay. I hope you got that. That's why I gave you that little pause. Uh, if you're somewhere in the middle, if you're on any of those other lines all the way through the middle, you're going to be called a mixed economic system. Okay. Let me get this thing off my ear. Um, so that's, that's that. Let's keep moving. Uh, there it is. You see command on one side and you see market on the other. If Mr. Duran is right here in the middle, then I'm mixed. Now, if I'm right here on the 10 yard line, like if I'm way over here on the 10, right down the center of my head, that means I'm still what? I'm still mixed, right? I'm somewhere still in the middle. Now, I'm more towards command that way, but I'm not 100% command. And there's really hardly any um, countries that are specifically 100%. There's really no countries that are 100% command or 100% market. So let's keep moving. Uh, we talked about those forums, and that's the Fortnite V-Bucks. All right, Australia's economic system. Let's see. I will identify the specific economic system in Australia. I just like how I'm just flying around here. Let's see if I can close this out, by the way. Okay. All right, so let's review. Do you remember the three questions that every country must answer? Every economic system and economic plan has to answer these three questions. What goods and services will be produced? What are they going to make? How will they be produced? and who will consume the goods and services, okay? And the way they answer those three questions is what tells us what we call it, what kind of economic system it is, okay? Traditional, all economic decisions are based on culture and traditions, uh, customs, beliefs, the past. A lot of it is, it comes down to farming, like the rap song, I don't know if y'all have heard that yet, that I worked on for you. Um, it's a lot of farming, fishing, hunting, trading, bartering, okay? Bartering is trading without using any kind of currency or money. Australia's Aboriginal people, uh, prior to English colonization, they used a traditional economic system like this. And there's a picture of them uh, hunting kangaroo, which I do, you know, weekly. I go hunting kangaroo. That's my, that's my big game hunter. Just kidding. Um, so all economic decisions are made by the government in a command. We've, I think we've already discussed these. I think y'all probably know these. Uh, there's the government pulling all the strings. Okay, they are the puppet master. They choose what people make in their country, how much of it gets made. Um, and, and a little bit of command is good. A little bit of government regulation is good, just like a little bit of market is good. Those two things actually are good. So don't think, hear me say command, the government controls everything like that's bad. It's not. Um, they're the ones who put restrictions on what can be sold at certain ages. So, you you know, little children, little your little baby sister, she shouldn't be able to buy certain medicines and stuff like that. She shouldn't just because she's got a little money in her hand. She shouldn't be able to do that because we have FDA and we have people that put um, restrictions and rules on things that you can buy that help based on our health, you know, that you want to keep your people in your country safe. Um, a command system that can be very harsh to live under because of this. There are no pure command countries. That's what I was talking about. Some countries are close. There's Cuba, uh, the former Soviet Union, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, if you know who that is, um, former East Germany as well. And uh, all of these countries have the same type of government. They have a communist government where the government is in control of everything. All right, let's see. <coughs> all right. A market economic system. Uh, this system answers the three questions based on supply and demand. If you've got a hot product, it'll probably be there in the snap of a hand. Thanos, okay? Uh, the goods and services that are produced are determined by what people want, what they want to buy. Just like uh, pop sockets were a big deal for a little while. Fidget spinners. I probably have some on my desk here, as a matter of fact. Um, those kind of things were popping that were very popular for a little while. And so, therefore, we produced more of them, okay, because the supply and demand drove that. 
The government has no control in a pure market. The government really doesn't have any control over the economy and the private citizens or the entrepreneurs or the people that go out and make fresh stuff. They're the people in charge of answering the economic questions. Okay, I think we understand that. Uh, in a truly free market economy, the government would not be involved at all. And that's what we're talking about would be scary because there'd be no laws to make sure that goods and services were safe. Think food, think medicine. Okay, There would be no laws to protect workers from unfair bosses. Okay, It wouldn't be very fair. And if a boss could, wanted to treat you poorly, he could do that. There would be no, in a pure market, there would be no restrictions for that. Because of this, there are no pure market economies, but some countries are closer than others. All right. Mixed. So let's talk about what most countries are. Few countries have an economy that is run entirely by government or completely by the free marketplace 100% of the time. Since there are really no countries with either a pure command or pure market, what does that make them? They are mixed. They fall somewhere a little bit of this and a little You can get with this or you can get with that. You can get with this or you can get with that. That's an old song. Um, Here's an index. We're going to skip that for time's sake. So continuum, but you can always access this stuff on Google Classroom. Continuum. Most countries fall on that continuum, that football field. Okay. They were those lines. That's just a, a visual representation. They fall somewhere on a continuum between 100% economy and 100%, uh, I mean, 100% market and 100% command. Okay. Here you see the continuum. This is they're like the football field, but without the green grass. And you see kind of where it is. And you see like the percents change based on how much one way to the right or left you are. Okay. Australia specifically, that's what I want to get into today. Australia has a mixed economic system. Big shocker, right? You didn't think it was going to be? Yeah, you did. Um, because they're 81% free and 19% command. Now, I got to say, that's really not bad at all. That's 81% free market and 19% command. That's a pretty good mixture. That's what you need. Uh, it's ranked in the, in the top five freest economies in the world, and it's close to having a pure market economy. Australia's government is committed to a free market and does not regulate much of its marketplace. Now, the three questions of how to produce, what to produce, and for whom to produce, uh, it, they all come down to different things. What to produce? Individuals and corporations based on supply and demand. How to produce? Individuals and corporations based on supply and demand. And for whom to produce? Say it with me. Individuals and corporations based on supply and demand. The slide moves when I move my hand. Ooh, all right. Mixed. So I'll show you has a mixed economic system. Like we said, 81% free, 19% command. It's ranked in the top five. I think I already did this one. Yeah, I did. My bad. You won't judge me, will you? Um, free market or freedom. Businesses make the majority of economic decisions of what to produce based on supply and demand of the market. Australia's national government plays a limited role in the economy, and they give citizens and business a great deal of economic freedom, but they still regulate a little bit over there. Okay. Um, the government strongly pro, uh, protects businesses and property rights, and starting a new business is relatively easy. So that's good for your entrepreneurs who want to start a business. It's relatively easy to get into starting a business. How many of you at home, how many of your family members have their own business? It's a good question. Um, my uncle and my aunt owned a pool room, a pool hall, and it was very popular. And it was in Albany, Georgia for years and years and years. And it was like a hot spot to go to, um, to play pool and that kind of stuff. So they had their own business. Individuals and businesses own more than 75% of Australia's land and resources. Uh, and Australia's government does not have many regulations on companies, nor does it regulate what jobs people have or what they are or how they're paid, so to speak. Australia's government has deregulated uh, the financial and labor markets. Deregulation means less regulation. Regulation are like rules and regulations, okay? So they deregulated some of that. And it's also removed most of the country's trade barriers with other countries. That's good. These actions have supported Australia's economy so much that it has not experienced any economic recession in the past 20 years, which is really powerful. They have not had in Australia any kind of economic problems or crisis in over 20 years. Whoa, dude, that's crazy. All right. Uh, Australia's government has very few rules to regulate the marketplace. The government does provide certain services, collect taxes. The government does that just like here. They regulate a small amount of trade. 
Um, they're known for their good courts and their laws that protect property owners. That's good. You want to be a property owner over there. And business corruption is rare. Now, in other countries we're going to learn about this year, so much business corruption that it's hard to even run a business and it's, it's hard to do what you're supposed to do. And we'll see how that plays out with the environment because you're going to see like in India, in some places, um, they don't put enough regulation on businesses and businesses can just dump all of their stuff out of their factories straight into the rivers. And it's pretty gross. We're going to learn about that. Uh, in review, Australia's government, if I can move my peanut head, uh, plays a very limited role in the country's economy. It regulates a small amount of trade and collects taxes, but it also gives citizens a lot of economic freedom to play with. Individual citizens and private businesses own most of Australia's land and resources, and they decide what to produce, how to produce, and what prices to charge. Okay, If you want to charge $5,000 for your fidget spinner or your pop socket, well, guess what? If the uh, demand is there, then you can supply it at that price and people will pay it. A matter of fact, over the COVID shutdown, Mr. Duran, let me show you real quick. It's like we're in class. Uh, Mr. Duran is an avid Nintendo Switch player. If you don't know what that looks like, let me show you. I love Mario Kart. I love Mario Odyssey. I love Zelda Breath of the Wild. I love all these games. Okay, I play I Fortnite. It's all in here too as well. You can play lots of stuff on this. But these bad boys, because of supply and demand, the supply ran out when COVID hit in March and you were able to, I was looking, you were able to sell these. If you had one, you could sell it pre-owned for like 500 and up. People were selling new ones for like $700. Y'all, this is a $300 system. Okay. Should never be that much, but because we are in um, a mixed market economy, we can take supply and demand and sell it. Kanye West can sell his Yeezy shoes. Let me show you. I got a pair of them right now. Just kidding. These are Asics. Okay. You can't smell that at home, can you? I hope not. Uh, these are these are Asics. These are dad shoes, okay? Get your dad life right. Um, but Kanye West could sell his Yeezy shoes for, I think they were $300. Last year, me and some of the students put them in our shopping cart just to see. Uh, I, I definitely did not click purchase because I don't spend that kind of money on shoes. But Kanye West wants to spend, wants to charge $300 for a pair of shoes. If his fans want to buy them and support that, which they do, they sell out. Uh, then he will sell them at that price. Okay, might seem a little too much, but it is what it is. Do you have anybody have Kanye West shoes, Yeezys? Anybody? Okay. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson. I think that pretty much covers us. And um, have a wonderful day.